I want you to know that the colonel was reticent. He didn't said, you guys don't want to hear some old guy talking about the war. And I said, yes, you do. Am I right? Well, thank you very much. I uh, haven't been out with the uh, warriors like you all. Uh, some of you all here this afternoon and to be asked to um, exchange a few words with you and I won't be very long because I still believe that most of you are waiting for all this old guys to get the hell out of here so you can go on liberty and I can't help but believe that that's true I would uh, say a couple of things uh, some couple of years ago, about four years ago, I guess, uh, one of the riflemen uh, in our company, Bravo Company, 1st Battalion, 26th Marine Regiment, um, began interviewing people, Marines, from Bravo Company during the siege at Quezon. And they have put together a documentary that I think, if you ever get a chance to see that, you would find it very, very interesting. It's 15 riflemen uh, that were right in the middle of that 77 day and night battle. These are some of the survivors. Just to give you a feel for that period of time, during that 77 days, Bravo Company suffered 65 killed in action and 185 wounded in action. 35 of those were wounded two and three times. So these are the kind of folks that uh, Ken and Betty Rogers interviewed. The name of the documentary is Common Men, Uncommon Valor, just like you all here and your mates, those that you went to war with and those that didn't come back as you did. I would only, in closing, say that if you have the opportunity, I think that you would, I wouldn't say enjoy, but you could see the overarching reality that if you have been an infantryman in any war that the Marine Corps has ever gone into battle, there's a commonality. It may have been some of the folks that are still alive from World War II at Iwo Jima. They could be a little younger folks that were in Korea on those hill battles. And some of the still yet younger people like me that were in and around Northern I Corps during the Vietnam War. And you folks. God bless you, that have been to Iraq, and been to Somalia, and been to Afghanistan, many of you more than once. God bless you. You, you guys are people that we look up to, even though that you're a bit younger than we are. If you get a chance to see that, you'll see the same look in the eye. You'll see the same stare you'll see the same results of what combat can do to folks. I will only leave you with just one, just one last comment. That there was a fine couple by the name of Rash, who on the 30th of March, a couple of months from now, be 46 years ago. We're getting ready to go out and try to bring back some of our wounded actually dead that had laid on the battlefield for over six weeks before we were finally able to go get them. Corporal Rash came in in the evening and wanted to talk to him. And we talked. He said, Skipper, I just want you to know that I only have 
about a week left on my tour before I go home. And I've got a real bad feeling about tomorrow. There's something going to happen. And I said, well, we all have that, and I think you'll agree with me. But I need you. We need you. He's the most experienced machine gun and uh, squad leader we have. He said, okay, Skipper, I just wanted you to know. <clears throat> but if you needed me, I'll be there. And this far removed, years later, it still bothers me. As we accomplished our mission, we're instructed to withdraw back into the combat base. He didn't make it. <clears throat> he covered our withdrawal and died in the process. He was written up for Medal of Honor and like Peralta, somebody way on up the line decided it was only Navy Cross stuff. But understand that even though we're old, the time has gone by, that there's nothing better for some of us old folks to spend an afternoon like now with you, because I don't think you'll ever know how much we love and appreciate you, and how much we owe you. And again, thank you for this few minutes. God bless you. And super fidelis.